Hello and welcome to Ye Old 33% Majority, a fantasy show where three friends fight dragons in dungeons. I am not your host, Alex Springthorpe. I am also not your host, Ashley Hall. But I am your host and dungeon master, Tom Hutchinson. And welcome to a really weird and different 10th episode of the 33% Majority. Nerds, welcome. Cool guys need not apply. (laughs) (laughs) You leave your leather jackets and your tattoos at home, you fuck. (laughs) This is not a podcast for popular people. Anyway, um, we thought as part of the, well, the 10th episode of this stupid, dumb podcast that we do, that, I mean, even though the whole thing is pretty much very self-serving, it's usually about the three of us, we wanted to make it even more about us and just do something that the three of us wanted to do, which is play a dumb game of dragons and dungeons. But that, I'm here yeah, for it. No, that pretty much does it. Yeah. Mm, this, yeah. this one's for us. This, Hey, if you are a listener of this show normally, stop listening now, because this one isn't for you. It's just for us three. This is our one. Listen, we're only recording this so we can listen back to it. In, in the night times when we're all a bit sad and lonely and we just want to think of the homies. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. This is a deep and personal thing that you're listening to, you little fucks. You better you better not. Mm, mm. Now um just to just just before we start playing the game, um just to give everybody a bit of background, um, shall we just go over how we actually sort of played this really nerdy fucking game? Yeah, so we we've we've done some of a campaign of this before. I was the dungeon master. What happened was I invested my entire life in it to the point where I was unable to do anything else. So we stopped halfway through like a game, not not even like halfway through the mm. campaign. I think it was halfway through one one game. <laughs> that's enough dragons <laughs> and, that's and dungeons it. for me now. And and so that's just no in more, a no more dragons, no more dungeons. Can't believe it. It's just in no, a I hate them both. A I don't know the words for it. <laughs> <laughs> good, good work, buddy. In this good work. Entirely speech-based platform. Yep. Uh, Alex has run out Purgatory. of Purgatory. It's in a purgatorial state <laughs> of everything and nothing. Yep. We cared for it so much until we immediately were allowed not to anymore. <laughs> mm, and we're going to do a different one. And um, I suppose as well, just as a little bit more background, um, I was first introduced to Dungeon- Dungeons and Dragons no. um, through watching. No. Oh. Not, not called that. Dragons and Dungeons. Thank you. Thank you. Much better. Uh, uh, no worries. Well, yeah. Okay. I cool. got ready to write this whole thing off and walk off from my desk. Just <laughs> then, just letting you know. Um, I I was introduced to Dungeons, Dragons and Dungeons through <laughs> a show called Community. Um, for any of the listeners that might have seen that as well, it's obviously very fun on that. Um, how were the two of you introduced to the dumb nerd game? Um. Uh, I- Alex, you can go first, mate, because my introduction is really fucking lame. Okay. okay. My introduction to Dungeons & Dragons was much the same way as my introduction to podcasting, which was the McElroy brothers Ooh. and their their adventure zone. So yeah, I mean, when I, was, when I was DMing, the balance arc of the adventure zone was my every inspiration. It was written by a man whose full-time job was writing the balance arc of the adventure zone. And so everything I ever wanted mine to be was that. And it never could be, mm. which is which is why maybe I gave up on it. But yeah, that was my introduction. Uh, for any of you, you unaware, it is three brothers and their dad playing dragons and dungeons together. And it's lovely. And it's called, by the way, just for reference again, The Adventure Zone. You can find that on all streaming platforms. It's very, very bloody good. Um, and Ashley, you? I, uh, I'm i actually really fucking cool, so I hadn't heard of it pretty much. Uh, I'd heard of it. I'd seen like snippets in, in media, but then Alex was like, hey, there's this thing that I want to do. And I was like, you know what? I want to do that. I want to get nerdy with my friends. Wait, hang on. The first time you heard of Dungeons and Dragons when, was your invite to come and play? The first, time I'd, the first time I'd ever considered going anywhere near it, yeah. You're far too trusting of us. <laughs> Yeah, literally. Yeah. Well, you guys, like, it's that's impressive. the thing is, like, anybody that I'm, like, friends with can call me and be like, hey, want to come do this thing? And nine times out of ten, I'm like, yes. Does that extend to the listeners as well? Listeners, if you message me saying, hey, do you want to fucking hang out? Listen, I want to hang out with you so hard. 
So yeah, I, I'm so excited to hand over the reins of Dungeon Mastership because, Tommy, I've been so nice to you up until this point and reassuring and helping you where I can. It's fucking uh... stressful and horrifying and I'm so excited to just play. Okay, well, I'm excited for you as well. Now, before we kick off, um, let's very briefly, just to set up some some backstory, can you guys both tell me about your characters? And because of the way I've written the beginning of this campaign, uh, I also need the two of you to freeball how you met and how you came together to become adventurers. Cool, that's fine. Uh, Ashley, you go first. Um, I'm going to be a mystical character... Um, and I'm going to base him on someone that I've admired all my life, uh, been a huge fan of, uh, someone I've always relied on. Um, I'm going to be me. <laughs> oh. I'm going to be. I'm just going to yeah. be me. But this is after I spent years on an Alaskan ship uh, fishing for crabs before realizing that actually what I really wanted, what would fulfill me is having a crab claw. So I've had my hand replaced with an Alaskan crab claw, my left hand. Okay, Ash, can I just ask a question? So you, you've got a crab claw, yes. but you are now not on Earth Prime. You're on the Dragon Listen, and Dungeon Listen, I'm a very planet. powerful man, and if I would like to, I would travel all throughout the many multiverses. Okay, but how did you get into the Dragon and Dungeon realm? Uh, I was going in my freezer for some more crab, and I fell. Uh, and, you fell and over. And I woke up from my crab fall, and I was there. Okay, cool. That's something to work with. Thank you for that, Ashley. You're quite welcome. Intricate lore from my back life there. Absolutely. Good words there, too. <laughs> I'll kill you. <laughs> Mine <laughs> isn't quite as fleshed out as Ashley's in many okay. in many senses of that word. Oh, no. Well, oh, like, okay. Because what? Because Ash has 23 years of backstory currently written. And, it's 26. Oh, no, I'm old. 26, you old fuck. Well, Ashley has a backstory. I didn't. I didn't get that far. Um, and also his character is more fleshed out because he has flesh. My character, whose name is Nimbus Alto, is a is a cloud. It's just a cloud. Just a, just a cloud. <laughs> what? what just, just a cloud. Just a sentient bit of water vapour. Okay. I'm going to have some real troubles in combat. I can feel that coming on. Oh, yes. Yep, yep, yep. Because <laughs> I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just me. <laughs> but some things to note about Nimbus Alto. Very, very wise. Very, very intelligent. In terms of combat abilities, he is a cloud. Biggest enemy. Any kind of gust. <laughs> oh no, what about the wind? Yep. Any area of high pressure and low pressure is going to present a pretty sizable obstacle <laughs> for Nimbus Alto to overcome. Oh, I can sense this becoming okay. swiftly problematic. Mm. Okay, so how did the two of you come together then? Um, I, I think, I tell you what, actually, I think it... it I've kind of got a bit of an explanation because Nimbus Alto, he's not just a sentient cloud. Um, he is also a cleric. Okay. And clerics kind of, they pick a, a deity whom they worship and are granted all of their magical abilities from. Um, and and my my character's god is named Talos. Talos. T-A-L-O-S. <laughs> Talos. Talos. Have you never played Skyrim? I don't. Talos. Talos. I don't like it. Yeah. His god's yeah. name is Tyrone. Okay, cool. <laughs> that is that what this game is. It can just be whatever the fuck you want. So yeah, let's let's call him Tyrone. Cool. I fear the mighty god Tyrone. <laughs> but Tyrone is the god of storm. So as a makes sense. Yep. So actually, as a sailorman. As a sea boy, yeah. I feel like we met roughly around the time you fell. You fell into the realm of dragons and dungeons. Perfect. I'm here. There's there's some dragons. Maybe there's maybe there's a dungeon. And there's definitely crab claws. So we're all winners. Okay. Do you want some flavour to go with that, Tom? Do you want do you want us to flesh out what that may have looked like? Um, I mean, let, let's just workshop it together. I mean, like off the call, I asked the two the, the the two of you guys to to level up a little bit. I didn't really want us to start at level one. I wanted this to sort of go straight into the action for the sake of the listeners. Um, but like, why are you guys adventuring together? How long have you been doing it? What's made you stick together? Maybe I don't know. Um, we met during a. So what happened was Ashley had been in touch with an artificer. What's one of them? Uh, a, a young. Per, a person what uses magic to invent things, I think. That's my definition okay, of it. Okay. That's what I know it to be. And d and is all about what you want it to be, Alex. And if you want it to be someone who makes magical things, who could stop you? Who Who is there that could put power to you, friend? That's what an artificer is. But the artificer had fitted him with a, a magical crab claw. 
Actually, if I remember rightly, you were you were recovering in the lower deck of the ship. Yeah, with my crab claw surgery complete. Uh, but just yeah, R and R, you've got to chill out after any kind of crab based surgery. <laughs> Crab-based okay, surgery especially okay. requires uh, patience. Exactly. But you hit a patch of, of troubled waters, a storm was afoot, waves higher than your ship could could possibly dream of overcoming, um, and you were swiftly overcome. Luckily, I, as a cloud, was just vibing it in this storm, and I saw you in trouble, and I, I came to help. And I'd never seen a man quite so handsome. Quite so crab clawed uh canonically by the way listeners my character looks l- just like me it's just my fa- it's my face so you know i am handsome in case you can't hear that in my voice okay okay cool that's that's a good bit of flavor thank you very much boys um shall we shall we away to fantasy land yes please oh, tell boy, me. shall we take us take us away dungeon daddy Okay, cool. Well, um, basically what I want to do to set the scene, I've got a bit of flavour text, and then I'll uh, I'll introduce what you guys are doing, if that sounds cool. I'm here for it. Cool, okay. So um, I want you guys to picture that you're currently looking at like a, a, a big sort of like, you know, 120 inch cinema screen for this intro. Listeners too, I want you to close your eyes, even if you're driving, and try and picture this. <laughs> um, Especially if you're driving. Silence in the fantasy studio, please. The scene is black. You hear footsteps in the distance. A dim glow from the left slowly begins to illuminate a puddle. A fictional camera pointed directly at the fictional ground. As the scene grows slowly brighter, we can see that the puddle is surrounded by black, moss-covered cobblestones. Silver, ornate writing begins to slowly take shape in the water forming random letters one by one. It reads, The 33% majority presents Dungeons and Dragons. The quiet, distant footsteps grow louder, stomping and splashing. Crash! Ashley, your human, Doc Martin-wearing feet land directly in the centre of this fictional puddle that I just spent ages describing. Actually, I think the puddle's going to be important. I'm staring deeply into the puddle, lovingly. <laughs> the puddle's going to be the big boss. Write that down. We'll remember that. Sorry, Tommy. You go. I'll continue to weave this fantasy tapestry. Ash, you're running ahead of Nimbus, whose faint but quite delightful glow illuminates the tunnel ahead of you. Ash, you're bloody. You're tired. You're hurt. Alex, I mean, Nimbus your cloud hurt whatever hurt is for clouds i'm not really sure how that works oh my cloud bones yes <laughs> yes your, cl- your your cloud bones yes mm. um so to f- to fill you in on where you are and what you're doing um you're both actually nearing the end of a particularly daring and ingenious quest uh, a gentleman who goes by the name of Jarl Neldor the Great, who presides over most of the towns and regions... Sorry, I, I didn't catch that name. Can you say it again? Who are you talking to uh, in your character God. right now? <laughs> God. Tyrone! <laughs> what was his name? <laughs> Tyrone! <laughs> Sorry. Tyrone, remind me. <laughs> his name was Jarl Neldor. That's Jarl, J-A-R-L, and Neldor, N-E-L-D-O-R. Jarl Neldor the Great. Carl. No, Jarl. Carl. 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 Okay, Carl, Carl Neldor the Great. He's the, ki- he's the king round here. He sent out a call to any and all adventurers to aid him in finding a cure for his son, who's contracted vampirism. And he said that any party that can bring him a cure will be rewarded handsomely. Now, you, the two of you, come from a town called Ravensmoor, and you both spoke with a bunch of novice adventurers before you set off, um, and they're looking for necromancers that, that might have experience with curing vampirism, but Ash, after speaking with a number of people outside the town, you've actually realised that your best course of action will be to try and raid the old fortress that the Grey Valor used to occupy. Now, can I ask the two of you to 
do our first roll of the game. Oh yeah. I've got my real my real life dice. Yeah, with real actual dice. Don't actually just what don't just rolling? roll. Yeah, roll for a purpose. And can can I have a history check from one of you please? Oh yeah, you can. I get a plus 3 cuz I love me some real life history. Uh history. I've never played as a person before. I'm always I'm always the other side of this. Where's where are my things? History, I get a plus five too, so that it's a seventeen. Oh. I know all and I know many. Okay, good work. And Ash, what did you get? I got sixteen, baby boy. Okay, so yeah, uh, you you both know um, that the Grey Valor are a group of very prolific and successful group of supernatural hunters. They're world renowned. Um, they spent most of their time occupying a fortress that's to the east of um, of Ravensmoor, where you guys are currently based. Um, but they left three or four years ago to to fight a, a growing blight of vampirism in the south so you both feel confident that the Grey Valor will have left a a large cache of supplies in their underground vault and you both imagine hopefully a cure for vampirism that they may use in the field so after reaching the imposing fortress locating the secret tunnel that's underneath the guards barracks and battling through an infestation of ghouls and giant rats you feel as though you're getting close to the vault. Wow, Ash. We've not had to roll any dice for this bit of the campaign. We must be very good adventurers. Probably the best adventurers. You do both have to take 50% damage right now, though, so can you just, like, take 50% from your Ow! overall hit points, please? Oh, Tyrone, why are you like this? Tyrone, mm. why? I don't like that I'm Tyrone. Tyrone, I have a question. Um, I have 21 health. Um, if I half that, it doesn't let me do halves. Okay, we'll round up. Oh, he's not a kind dungeon boy, is he? He's the rudiest he's dude horrible. with the baddest dude. No, I meant, no, I meant, I meant, I meant that if half of 21 is 10.5, just round that up to 11. And so you've got 11 hit points. I wasn't saying take 11 hits. I was saying give yourself 11. Tyrone, it can be a cruel guard. Um, I... I, I would like to use my first level evocation spell, Cure Wounds, on Ash immediately. <laughs> okay, okay, roll that one up then. By the looks of things, it just happens. A creature you touch regains a number of hit points equal to 1d8, which is an eight-sided dice, plus your spell casting ability modifier. This spell has no effect on undead or constructs. Um, so I'm going to roll 1d8 plus 7. That's a... For 11, 11 points of, of health for Ashley, please. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm Ash, back. back to Max, buddy. Well done. Um, just mark down that spell slot. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep, take note of that. We, we, there we... you go, Ashley. Do you feel better? I'm fully erect for this adventure, thanks, you cloudy fuck. Have you anything I could use? <laughs> I'd like to offer you some words of encouragement. Come on, little buddy, we got this. And how okay. ma- how many hit points does um, that? You're both no, walking sorry, down. Tom, a... How many hit points does that get me back? Does that get me back hit points? The words of encouragement. I'll, do you know what? As the DM, I'll give you back 0. 0.5 hit points for those kind words. Just just round it up, Alex. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just round it up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Anyway, you're both walking down a narrow, winding tunnel, one that looks exactly the same as the ones you've been in for what feels like weeks, and you hear a, a low rumble, something like a, a grunt or a growl. I think we should investigate that. In character now, I just like to spin around on the spot three or four times, just screaming and looking around. Because, you know... <laughs> Sorry, screaming? Oh, do you need me to actually well, do it? Well, I mean, I'm going to respect the RP, but actually I probably... You know, we should be aware that any of our stealth points have now been depleted. That's not a and d mechanic but <laughs> listen i get i get plus five to stealth so i think that makes up for it. <laughs> probably not <laughs> but go <come> on <laughs> like just uh in in post can we just stretch that out i can't <laughs> okay sure yeah and um <clears throat> with that yes 
Alex or Cloud or Nimbus. Um, yeah, you've expended. Yeah, you you guys don't have the element of surprise now. You hear a, a huge chest rumbling roar, and out from the darkness jumps the largest dog you've ever seen. And as you look closer, you realise that it has two heads. It's a death dog. Can you guys, please, roll for initiative? Oh, yes, I can. What's my... Um, just for the listeners, whilst the the, the boys are, are rolling, um, rolling for initiative basically decides the order of combat. So the guys would roll a 20-sided dice and then add their... Um, their modifiers to that number to decide who goes first and what order the fight will be. And I'm also rolling the initiative for the dog too. Speaking of two, that I got one of them. Okay, cool. Good work, buddy. You, you tried your hardest. Ash? I get a plus two to initiative, so your boy got four. Four? Yeah. Fuck, right. Okay, well... I'm sick, I am, by the way. Yeah, you. Yeah, that's bad. Okay. Um, well, in that case, um, the death dog is going to go first. And Ash, because you were the one screaming and shouting and spinning in a circle after having fought through, you know, a horde of ghouls and large giant rats, um, he's going to go straight for you, and he's going to go for a, a bite. He's going to try and take a chunk out of you. So let's roll. That is a. 16 plus what am i adding hmm that's a good question i don't know let's just call it 16 for the time being because i forgot how to play this fucking game uh <laughs> 16 against your armor class ashley does that hit yeah uh, i haven't got any armor on so yeah cool okay let's roll up some what is your armor class ashley just for the sake of the listeners so they know uh 12 but for the sake of yeah listeners i've got 12 armor points naturally so if you meet me in real life just know that unless you can do more than 12 damage you better just not okay well you're gonna take uh five damage he does five damage sinking his teeth into your shoulder luckily you managed to shake him off but not before you've taken that damage buddy outrage Yep, anyway, next up, Ash, you are next up in the order. Um, I haven't looked at your weapons or anything that you've got, so what are you going to do? I, I'm actually unarmed, just like in real life. I, I don't need a weapon, because I am I am a weapon in and of myself. So I'd, I'd like to uh, to run at it and do a flurry of blows, which is, because uh, I'm a monk uh, in real life as I well. Knew that about uh, yeah, no lies yeah, that, there. That, that encapsulates yeah, yeah, who you are as a person, definitely. Yeah, well, I wear the beanie hat, so you can't see the big bulb hat there, <laughs> so, because you've got, if you're going to be a monk, you've got to, you've got to have that, haven't you? Have you got the airbending arrow on your forehead, like, um, like Aang? I have a symbol, but I can... No, I'm just kidding. Um, no, I don't, have, I don't have anything on my forehead. Okay. Okay. So I, I can do Flurry of Blows, which means after I, uh, after I attack, I can spend one key point to make two extra unarmed strikes. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run at the wall, I'm going to kick... Uh, fucking hell dog. I'm going to kick him in his noggin, and then I'm gonna do two little karate pokes right at his eyeballs. <laughs> okay, do you have do you have to uh, roll against my armor class here or Listen, not? Listen, I don't want to say fuck your armor class because I'm gonna kick it. But yeah, sure, I'll roll against it. Hang on. Cool, thank you. Well, this is upsetting. I, I got a 17. That's probably quite yeah, good. That's, yeah, that that yeah you. Okay, so that hits. Yeah. Wow, Ashley, what an excellent punch you did. I wonder how much it hurt thank you. him. <laughs> <laughs> Are we married to that character voice? What you're not hearing, what you're not hearing in the oh, moment, okay. is all of the reverb and mystical v- sound effects oh. that come as part of my voice. Like if I put them on right now, I sound like a fucking idiot. Alex, you were complaining about the complexity of editing, and, okay. and now you're like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make my character sound like Bruce, Bruce Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> I complain about um, the time that I had to spend literal hours, actually, editing you eating lozenges out of the podcast. Listeners, listeners, those lozenges are essential. Without, without my mm. comedy input, you got. Listen, I'm the talent in this group. <laughs> I'm the Brad Pitt. All right. <laughs> as as both the host and the dungeon master, um, Ash, you you die. Tyrone <laughs> strikes me from the bullet. <laughs> Thanks, Tyrone. Fuck sake. No, Ash, 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 you. You can't thank me or say anything. I'm You're deceased. dead. And what if I, if you die in Dungeons and Dragons, you die in real no, life? No, hang on. I've That's, got a cantrip called "Spare the Dying," 
Uh, I touch a living creature that has zero okay. hit points. The creature becomes stable. The spell has no effect on undead or constructs. I don't know what a construct is, but I feel like this is useful. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Um, yeah, so I do an unarmed strike and I do 1d4 plus 2, but because I do my my flurry of blows, I get two extra. So I roll a d4, uh, d4 three times and add six. Go for it. While Ashley rolls some dice, a d4. The, what you're going to hear a lot is d4. D6, D8, and and things of that nature. The D means dice. The number is the number mm-hmm. of sides it has. D6 is the the normal, the normal dice you'll know and love from games like Monopoly. Mm. Do they have a dice in Monopoly? I think so. Yeah. So I'd like to now let you know Monopoly. Uh, so it was sixty. Oh, fuck! I just lost it. I lost it. I've moved my dice, but it was, it was three six, ones. Yeah. It was three ones. It, it it's wasn't got three to have ones. been it three ones. ones. There's no way it wasn't three oh, ones. I'm gonna fuck you, you fuckers. Hack, you right, I'm, I'm doing it, but this actually, time I'm not you can't just dice. re-roll because you got three ones. I didn't get three ones. This is shit. What did you get then? But I, I like I said it out loud. I said out loud what I got. Well, I'll cut them in now. I cut you in just saying I, one three times. That's all I did. <laughs> <laughs> fuck it i did one three times but plus six so i did fucking nine i did nine damage nine damage okay <laughs> cool 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 nimbus Perfect. you're up next um what i'm gonna propose some stuff here um because nimbus he's not a fighting man he's a cleric he's he, he's a supportive character more than anything else and doesn't really have any okay. to none of the the spells that do damage. Okay, Alex. Um, just like quick sidebar on yeah, this yeah. side of the studio. Uh huh. You, you do realize you do realize that like this is for radio and like yeah, yeah, yeah. you know you, you were supposed no, no, to be no, able no, to I'm play the game. This yeah? is going to knock your socks off. All right, let's go back. Hi, Ash. Sorry, sorry, sorry about that, Ash. I got told off for doing a dumb character again. Um, so what? What? Um, Ash and sorry, is it a death dog? Did you say? The death dog, yep. Are we fighting a dead death? So what Fido and Ashley are seeing now is Nimbus Nimbus just naturally gives off a beautiful divine glow, but that, that glow almost intensifies and there's like deep, rich purple colours. Um, if you were to roll an investigation check, you'd know I was concentrating. Um, as I cast my cantrip, Thaumaturgy. Um, I'll read you the description of what this, this spell is. Thank you. You manifest a minor wonder. A sign of supernatural power within range. You create one of the following magical effects within range. Blah, 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 and the one I'm going to use. You create an instantaneous sound that originates from a point of your choice within range, such as a rumble of thunder, the cry of a raven, or ominous whispers. But what I'm going to use Thaumaturgy thaumaturgy for is uh, I would like from just behind the Death Dog, where he came from, I want him to hear the sound of sizzling bacon. And, and what I propose for this is the dog to make some kind of check to see if he's intrigued by the bacon. Okay, I like it. I like it. I'd like to give Fido a bacon trick. Okay, okay. So wait, is this coming from the way the way he came from or the way you guys have come from? Uh, where he came from. I wanted to... Where he came from. Wonder okay. if someone has, has is frying up a delicious pork snack just for him. Okay. Okay. Well, the the death dog does have minus four to intelligence, yes. so let's let's Which give it a go. Which is the same as me in real life, so this is all working out great. Okay, that was a ten minus four, so that's a that's a six, and I'm gonna say that can't be good, Tommy. I'm gonna say that, that can't be good for him. No, I'm gonna say that like he mm, his his doggy instincts are taking over, and he really doesn't want to. But food is, the ready made food is better <laughs> than food he has to kill. So mm-hmm. he's gonna, he's gonna, and and my light intensifies as I'm focusing on producing the crackling sounds oh, of bacon. Good, good, good. That's good flavour. Um, so what he's gonna do is he's gonna stamp on his two front feet and just roar at the two of you, and then immediately one eighty and just scamper off. And you guys lived to tell the tale. Well done. <laughs> Thank God for that. I, I, I didn't want to have to kill it with my bare hands. Mm. Yeah, no, that was going to be visceral. 
Um, well, you, you guys did it in a very interesting way, which is good work. You could have killed him. But anyway, um, I'm going to stop railroading the two of you and let you sort of decide what you want to do now. Hmm? You know your goal? You know what you're trying to do? Ashley, do you think the dog is going to pose a problem in our future? Nah, man. I'm sure it'll all it'll all work out. It'll all work out. Okay. I think he will have despawned. <laughs> it's just like uh, Destiny. You just go hide in a corner, and eventually everything everything turns out fine. Hang on. Check the mini map. Do you see the blip on the radar? I, I, I listen. I'm looking. I'm, I'm feeling. There's no mini map here, buddy. <laughs> I I don't want to say we might be lost, but we might be lost. Shall we do a check to investigate? Let's gently investigate. Let's probe the area. Tyrone, tell me what I see. <laughs> <laughs> it's a god. What is Tyrone on. telling you, my sweet uh, prince? Nimbus is a very smart man. I'm not. So I've just got to take just a little minute here, just figure out all of my stuff. Just add up your numbers. Yep. yep. Okay. That is. A, a dirty 20, which is to say, it is a 20, but I didn't roll it naturally. It is a 17 plus 3. Okay, okay, good work. So, um, with that investigation check, um, you can see ahead of you that there's a T-junction, essentially. The, the cave splits off in two directions, and you can hear a combination of, of, of two noises, but you can't yet discern which way they're coming from. You can hear the sound of intense like rushing water and then also the sound of like creaking and pistons pumping sort of steam being expelled and also the sound of bacon cooking i hope yeah bacon bacon in, in and around the fry of bacon in the somewhere. distance yeah <laughs> okay here's the deal then we're gonna we're gonna march on towards the steam and pumping sounds okay okay so what do you think? What do you think, Nimbus? Uh, I need, I need just sweet knowledge. It reminds me of the engine on the boat from which I met you on. How sweet! I love it when you talk about when we met. You're so handsome and cloudy. It was such a romantic evening. I wish I could hold your hand, but I can't because the drowning, you are the drowning, the near death. <laughs> <laughs> not, not my highlight. I'll be honest with you. The handy J with the crab claw on my cloud pee. No. Don't say that in front of Tyrone. God is listening. God is ever present and wants you to play Dragons and Dungeons. Tyrone is a dirty boy and he likes the cloud peen. Oh, God. Don't you, Tyrone? No. Just the, the voice of, please edit the voice of God in, in like a choir of hallelujahs, <laughs> and then just, yeah, I fucking do, homie. <laughs> oh, <gosh. laughs> so sorry, I, I got wrapped up in you jacking off Nimbus with a crab hand. With my crab hand. Which way are we going? Uh, I'm going to snip my cl- crab hand pointing forward with it and say, this way, dear friend, and we're going to walk towards the steamy puppy boy noises. Perfect. Tommy, okay, do we need to do a walking um, check? No, 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 you guys can just walk. I mean, Alex, you yeah. float, but yeah, you, oh, yeah, you, you, you two can just move. Yeah. Okay, so taking the right-hand tunnel towards the sound of the, the, the creaking and the pistons. Take us to the rumpy pumpy. Yeah, the, 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 washing, the, the rushing water sound behind you dissipates, and you find that you're actually inside of an abandoned armory. The shattered weapons that are all pushed up against the walls. And as you walk, you can... Well, Ash, as you walk, you can hear the clanking of metal under your feet. And th- there is still that sound of, of pistons and steam sort of in the far end of the room, but the light is very dim. You can only see because of Nimbus's glow. Uh, Nimbus, can you uh, can you shine a little light in that direction? And I'll, I'll do an investigation. We'll have a look around. Yes. Hang on. <sighs> Oh, okay, so it sounds like you're shitting. Okay. How is that? Thank you so much. Uh, Tyrone, I rolled a, uh, a 15 and I get a plus three, so it's it's cool, cool 18. Amazing. Okay. Well, with that... I can see very far with my eyes. Good good work, actually, buddy. Just, actually, just you. remind me, in real life, do you have dark vision? Uh, yes, yeah, I do, yeah. It's canon. That's um, canon in real it's life. It's impossible okay, for okay. anyone. It's canon in real life. No one can sneak up on me in the dark. I can see in the dark. Ashley eats all of the carrots. 
Is it on your character sheet though? <laughs> no, it's not. But this is <laughs> then this fuck. Is real then life. fuck. Then fuck you. Then fuck you. You don't have dark vision. Well, I asked him to shine a light over there anyway, and he did by making a big poo noise. Dragons and Dungeons Ashley is actually allergic to carrots, and mm. we must bear that in That's mind. That's my one Should weakness. Should any of our foes in the future be carrot wielders, that you are deathly allergic to them? Yeah, you shouldn't have told me that because now I know your weakness. <laughs> anyway, Ash, with that investigation check of what was it, eighteen? Did you say seventeen yes, or eighteen? It was eighteen, sir. 18. Okay, with that, there's a, a machine in, in the far corner of the room and it seems to be some kind of automatic ammunition dispenser. And evidently the Grey Valor left this running when they uh, when they hustled to leave. Um, there's crossbow bolts all over the floor, like literally everywhere. And there's actually a crossbow hung on the corner of the machine. Um, I'll get it. Never mind. <laughs> Yeah, cool. Um, yeah, so there's a there's a crossbow um, hung on the side of the machine. Ash, I'd like to uh, I'd like to as I would in, just like I would in real life. <laughs> it just it's just walk up, look around, see if anyone's if this belongs to anyone, uh, and they just take it. Okay, cool. So as you pick it up, you uh, explode. No, um, <laughs> there's um, <laughs> just like that time I stole a push bike. God damn. <laughs> Tyrone works in a mysterious way. <laughs> mm, more for you for not investigating literally everything. No, Don't um, you stabilize the dead again. It's actually been killed twice already. No, no, it's okay. It, no, that was a, that was an alternate universe. That was a, an alternate ah. timeline. In the prime timeline, um, Ash, you as you lift up the crossbow, you realize that its sling was sort of wrapped around uh, a lever, a lever, a lever, and as you lift it. Um, the lever actually moves into the off position and finally the machine has stopped whirring and spitting out crossbow bolts which are literally in a pile on the floor there's more than ash you can even count there's no, thousands we, uh, hundreds I, of thousands I think we could try one can you carry stuff two cloudy ball. okay I'll leave Three. I'll leave that to you stopped at one I just lost care yeah, good two. work yeah okay <laughs> anyway uh, for the sake of austerity is it a light crossbow or a heavy crossbow it's a light crossbow god damn it <laughs> yep um also as part of your insanely good investigation check ashley um there's also a, a very small but intricate key laid on the top of of one of the the canisters of, of the machine it, it's the the most intricate key you've ever seen the um the the nooks that sort of decide where the pins go they curve in different directions and um you actually notice that there's four letters on the stem that haven't been rubbed off through use and time and you can see k a l and s those those are the letters you can Sorry, see what, one 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 more time k a L S, is it? but they're all spaced out, and is... so you can tell that there were word, there were letters. Oh, in between, in between every letter, it's K space A L space S space. Oh, uh, it would appear we have a mystery on our hands. Carols like from old school RuneScape. He has a crossbow. Mm, no, shut up, nerd. Yeah, shut up, freak. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so we're gonna yeah um, buck all this noise. I've got my crossbow. I've got my crossbow bolts. We're gonna take the key, obviously. Mm-hmm. Can uh, can my sweet baby boy uh, Nimbus? Could you float over it first to make sure there's nothing gonna like fuck me up? Sorry, what what was I floating over? <laughs> <laughs> float over the key, homie. Yes, and <laughs> and I do. And and I and do. And you've done it. Well done. And Look at there's me go. nothing wrong with the key. It's a key. It's just it's a key. And you express more sort of uh, caution with a key than with a fucking crossbow. Well done, Ashley. You yeah. did it. Well, yeah, because keys are important. Crossbows are a tool for murder. Okay. Okay. You see a crossbow and you go, yeah, that's dangerous. A key, not inherently dangerous. Mm, mm, I would I would agree with you there, Alex. Anyway. Uh, Anything, what else are we doing? What are we doing now? Making our way downtown. Floating, Floating fast. fast. Floating fast. Faces past. We're homebound. Grasses passes as I'm ass. Yeah, okay. Um, 
So we're so we're currently in the Grey Valor's armory. Mm-hmm. Ashley has collected himself. We've turned off the machine, pumping out all the crossbow ammo. Yep. Ashley's got himself a crossbow. Do you want to go back to the stream? Yeah, should we head towards the, the water? Hell yeah. Um, I've equipped my crossbow. I'm carrying it in my little handy boys. Uh, listen for the sounds of me going, Wah! as I fire a crossbow into the crowd. Yeah, all, all stealthy. Good work. Yes, good stealthing, Ashley. So what, you're leaving this room and going... To the, the, the back to where the back to where the water pump where the water noise is. Okay. Were. Um so leaving the room and, and taking the, the left hand tunnel, um you follow the cave system up through an incline. Um regardless of, of where you've been, this experience for you so far has been dank, cramped, and wet. In stark contrast to the spacious fortress above. But the tunnel begins to widen. The squat, moss covered walls and low-hanging ceilings start to give way to tall, pristine marble and increasingly taller ceilings. You find yourselves in this image that I'm sending you both right now. And for the sake of the audience, this should be on the Instagram somewhere so that you can all review it too. Oh, it, anyway. That's a picture of Alex's microphone. No, no, no. That's not the one I sent. <laughs> oh, and it. Okay. That that was another picture from earlier in the chat. So this is what we're looking at here yeah. is a map. <laughs> it's a map, yes. Um, as a bit of flavour text, you find yourselves in a wide, airy atrium. There's light beaming in through a planar portal that's in the centre of the ceiling above you. Uh, it also seems to be the mouth for an extra-dimensional waterfall, and the water falls from the middle of the ceiling in a pillar-like column directly down, downwards. Um, the bottom of this waterfall, there's a 10 foot wide grate or drain that's allowing the water coming from the portal to leave the room. But there's a, a huge amount of water being sort of splashed in every direction and it's making the, the floor around the waterfall very reflective and slippery. Please do as you will with the map you've been given. Let us investigate! Um, do you want to go and have... There's fires in three corners. There's the stairs. I assume we're still at the, the bottom of the room. You are. You are at the... Ve- you're at six o'clock. So let's try and be... Let's try and be super duper explainative for listeners. Or are we just banking on listeners having this image available? I would say it's beneficial if the lis- listeners want to have a look at it. But yeah, if you guys could... We're looking at a, a circular room. You guys have walked in from six o'clock on the circle, if it were a clock. And Ashley, you just described that at 12 o'clock, three o'clock and nine o'clock, there are fires in... in Not, not in fucking corners, because circle don't have corners. Um, but yeah, there are three fires. And yeah, yeah please continue. But what are the other times? That's like... At about half past seven, there's a statue. What would be the bottom left, top left, top yeah. right, bottom right? In between the fires, there are statues by the looks of things. Some of them have got little things underneath them. So that what looks like a, a hand holding something, what looks like a trough of water, and what looks like a bowl. And then there's a, a flowing pillar of water, did you say? So it's coming from the ceiling into the floor in just a cylindrical waterfall. Yes, yeah, it's just travelling directly downwards. Ah, oh, fuck yeah! And then Nimbus kind of just zooms over and just kind of gently, <laughs> just kind of, just the edge of his cloudy form just kind of dips it a little bit in because he is, he is water vapour, so... I don't know what he's going to gain from doing this. I'm sure Tyrone's going to tell me, but it's something. Does he just fill the room? Some more mass. You get a bit more mass. You're a bit heavier now. <laughs> I now really need to piss. Yes, exactly. It's like having a drink, but just on steroids. Excellent. Um, okay, I know from experience that outside of the fiction, I'm not good at puzzles, but actually this looks like a puzzle, which you are good at. Cool. Um... I'd like to do an investigation check on the statue that is to my front and to my right, like forward right. It's the one that looks like it's got a trough of water from where I'm standing. So that it would kind of be about between one and two o'clock. Yeah, it's a lunchtime kind of deal. Sure, sure. Okay, so roll that investigation check, buddy. 
16 plus 3, it's a 19. Oh, wow. Hell. You guys have rolled good so far. Well done. Okay. So it's a, a very, very intricately designed golden set of armor. Um, yeah, below its feet is a, a wooden trough of water, although it stands on like a sort of marble pedestal. So it, yeah, it, it's obviously sort of presenting its importance. Um, As we all are in this life. What you... <laughs> What you glean, <laughs> what you glean from this, Ashley, is that the trough is part of a puzzle. I knew it. <laughs> What's at the statue behind me? I'm stood at the trough. I'm looking. I turn around, 180 degrees. There's a, what looks like a, a marble plinth and a bowl? Question mark. So this would be like seven, seven or eight o'clock, which would be like what supper time? Supper, uh, yeah, what, what's supper what time? Is, what does the supper time statue say? I want that supper time, supper time, time statue. <laughs> Fuck me, Jesus Christ. <laughs> um, Ash, if you'd like to just speed run this, you can investigate all four at once, and I'll give you yeah, some. Yeah, just shit. tell me what the fuck is underneath those six statues. Exactly. You handsome bitch. Okay, so each suit of armor is facing the center of the room. The, from if we're going clockwise, starting with the top right one, we've got a water trough, a wooden bowl, a metal gauntlet, and then finally in the top left, that one is missing its item. There's a, there's evidently something there that should well that used to be there. I'm gonna teabag the empty gauntlet. Okay. Um, I'm just gonna squat and just dip my balls into it and sh- and shout. Hey, hey, Nimbus! Look, I can, I can teabag this statue's Whoa, hands. That's awesome, dude. Let me take a picture. And then I get my fantasy, what? I get my fantasy camera out, Tom. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. And I, and I. And that's... what does that look like with your hands that you don't have? Shit. You know, I, I produce it immediately, and it falls to the floor and breaks. <laughs> I have no <laughs> means of holding it. Cool. Okay. Good work. Yep, exactly. <laughs> uh, so it was just held within you, and you just sort of barf it up, and then it's, yeah, it falls to the floor and dies. The flash goes off. <laughs> and I also do a little piss as it falls. It frightens me, and some of the extra mass falls out. Okay, okay. So anyway, you guys know what's going on with the, the statues, and you know what you know what's going on in front of all of them. I'm going to get the, the wooden bowl, and I'm going to fill it with water out of the, water, the fountain in the middle, and I'm going to put the water in front of uh, the empty statue and just be like, are you thirsty, homie? Okay, so you do that. Yeah. So it's, I, I, think, I think you kind um, of, you, you're onto something. Sorry to interrupt, Tommy. I know this is no, really no, no. bad manners of me, actually, and now I regret all of it. No, no, it's okay, buddy. You carry on. So actually, I think you are onto something because we have four statues. Three of them have a something. The fourth one doesn't. So I think the fourth one needs a something. So you just sling the, key, sling the key down at his feet. That is an option. So we'll, you're you're doing a water thing now. We do also have fire, which is going to play a part, I think, and also a key. So let, let's start with yeah, a little bowl of of water. Take my bowl of water. Maybe I'm gonna. Maybe I'm just gonna pour it on the glut. No, I need to find out. Like, there's got to be more to it than just be it in the bowl full of water. What do I do with the water? You afterwards? just pop it down at his feet. Try try just popping it down at his feet where the other ones are. Just pop it down. Yeah, we will just pop it down his feet. Just drop it down at his feet, and then look up to the sky. Tyrone. Tyrone, is this it? No. Shit. <laughs> Shit, piss and cum. <laughs> I think it's interesting that sometimes I sound different. Sometimes it's like I speak, but I use like a different voice that sounds just like Ashley's. That's cool. It's really, really interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. That's a character character arc thing. Yeah. It's kind of spooky, isn't it? So it wasn't that. How would we use fire? I'm not going any... Right, ju- I'm, I'm going to just lay down some rules here. I ain't going anywhere near fire. Cool, yeah, makes sense. I will not exist. Oh, you're a cloud. You'll disappear. That's fair. I would like to... So, metal gauntlet, trough... There's no writing anywhere in the room, is there? There's no There's no clues, no hints. Well, just you have items. very... You have barely explored the room. You have looked at four of the suits of armour, and you've you've spotted fires. That's it. That's all you've done so far. Oh, I would like to investigate the fires, please. Okay, but you just said you wouldn't go near them, Alex. From afar? Yeah, you can investigate from afar. I do it to people all the time. I can, like, peer in a little bit, can't I? With a, I would like to, from a safe distance, investigate the fires, please, Tommy. Okay, what's your invest... What, what did you get? Glenn? I got... 
Hmm. What do I see with a seven? What do you see with a seven? With a seven, yeah. Like, I, I rolled the dice and it said seven after I added all the numbers up. Yeah. What does that mean? You don't know how fire works, but you know that the thing is hot. Mm -hmm. um, and just behind the fire, you can see two sort of glowing dots of gold sort of just, like, twinkling behind it. So, what, like, lamps? Would, would I, Alex Springthorpe, recognise these as lamps? Or is it a mythical fantasy glowing orb? No, no, no. So, do I need to do something else to find that sort of information out? <laughs> Bef behind the fire, there are two things twinkling at you that are on the wall with a seven. I mean, you only got a seven. Actually, there's two things twinkling. And there's things twinkling and I... I do not have the mental fortitude to understand if they are mythical or regular. <laughs> I'm gonna just dash over. I'd be like, just grab those balls. Just grabbing those balls. No, no checking. No, no finding out. I'm just gonna grab those balls. Okay, you guys are bad at Dungeons and Dragons, but um, Ash, you you hop you hop over the fire pit sort of lightly singeing your crotch region. You do still have your testicles out from when you teabag something. Yes. <laughs> the smell of burnt hair fills the room. Yes, exactly. You you jump over the fire and with both hands reach out to grab what Alex has described to you as two fantasy orbs. And as you get over the fire, you realise that your hands have just hit solid wall and they're actually just two clockwork looking mechanisms that are inlaid into the marble wall. Are there, are there any keyholes? Can I investigate? I'll investigate. Go on, investigate him. It's a 14 plus 3, so your boy gets a 17! It looks very... The one that you're looking at, which is on the right hand side, looks very, very similar to the key that you did done pick up. Slap the key into it, big boy! Okay, it doesn't fit. Are there any others? <laughs> well, if you were to look at... Yeah, just look at the map. How many does it look? There's like six of them. I'm going to try the total. key on each yeah. one. There's six. I'm going to shit, piss and come into one of them. Um, but I'm going to try bottom left and then go around the room clockwork. Clockwork, clock clockwise. Wise like a clock. You get to... Um, oh, what would we call it? Just below nine o'clock. The one that's below the nine o'clock fire. Um, you, you jam the key into the keyhole and you twist it and it, it spins um, and it's, it's crunchy and it, it feels like it hasn't been turned for a while obviously parts of the key have been worn down have we got any fantasy WD-40 you don't know but it still does turn without that a bit of spit a bit of lube <laughs> makes it work um, yes ye olde lube um, and as it turns there's sort of like a you know on a toilet where it says like occupied and vacant and like yes. whatever as you turn the key 180 degrees there's like a, a plaque that reveals itself that says Quailish that's K-W-A-L-I-S-H Quailish hey that's the thing that was missing off the th key yeah and um Ash um given your proficiency with woodworking in real life and being a boy who knows a lot about stuff i know some stuff yeah you're immediately just ruined by this revelation you know that you will not get into this vault unless you have every single key you need every single key to get in here and there's no way you can do it without this is the fourth time in your life that you've been looking for something and you've come a across what everybody refers to as quailish locks th then you're not going to get through it at all there's no chance i'd like to uh roll a uh fucking luck can i roll for luck and try and like just throw my fist at the lock once i'm just gonna try once you're just gonna just straight once. up and up and down roll a dice to get in and if it's very good then you're hopeful that something might happen. up and down roll a dice let me in i am for this plan Give it a go. Give it a go. Give it a go. Yeah, of course. I mean, you gotta, you gotta try these things. Well, it's, it's, it's a fucking one. That's not cool. Good work, buddy. You don't get in. You actually fall over. You fall over real hard. Real hard. I take sixteen damage and pass out. No. <laughs> no. But you do hurt yourself, and you're not happy, and you're even more miserable than you were before. So do I know? That we can't get in. Does Nim is Nimbus aware of this, Ashley, or have you had this shocking revelation and kept it kept it all to your selfish self? 
Hang on, Nimbus, you're literally a cloud. You're literally a cloud. Why don't you just go through the keyhole? That would hurt my cloud bones. You, Nimbus, I don't think clouds have but I don't want to say I know better than you. I don't know if that's racially mm -mm. insensitive. I have had one too many experiences of trying to squeeze into holes I was not meant to squeeze through. I won't do it. You promise not to tell anyone about it. I won't that. Come on now. do it. Okay, so we need to find these six keys. That's that's where we're at. I've, I find I find the keys, Tom. Tom, I find the keys. They're over here. Tom, they're, mm, they're okay, over well, here. I'd like to roll a key finding check. That's gonna be a, that's gonna be a process. Um, you can't just roll that. I rolled a fourteen on key finding. How how how? Okay, so with that with that key finding check, you know that the keys aren't in here, and you need to leave. So leave. Okay, cool. Thanks, great god, Tyrone. We escape. Do we, we, run do out we go through the waterfall? I think we go through the stairs. Just sort of go back the way you came, really, if you want to. <laughs> uh, we're just going to go back the way we came. Let's go. Let's go. Nimbus right now. solemnly sit, has one final sip of the, the fountain before before drip, dripping his way out. Okay. Good work, Nimbus. Yeah. The two of you, well, Ash, you trudge, and Nimbus, you, you drip your way <laughs> out of the tunnel system. And um, as you emerge from underneath the guard's barracks, you hear the sound of a, a faraway horn playing in what sounds like celebration. And you both sort of infer that another party have delivered the cure for the Jarl's son. For whose son, sorry? Um, the, the Jarl, old Karl. We're looking for a cure for vampirism for Karl. Yeah. For Karl's son. For Karl's son, who's, who's caught being mm. a vampire. He, he's he been out there being a vampire. I've seen him doing it. Mm. Poor Karl. Um, interestingly enough, though, um, one thing that you guys sort of forgot about, um, and by forgot I mean that I just fucking forgot to tell you, is um, that the... Um, Carl's son, um, in order to, you know, sort of stave off the uh, the vampirism, he actually sealed him inside of a, a magical iron coffin, um, which is sort of mounted on top of, of legs that can walk around. Um, and Ashley, because you just know a lot about building stuff, you know that it's actually an early Quailish design as well. Um, you've seen this, this name pop up a bunch of places. Yo, dude, pretty whack that he locked his... Vampire son in a coffin robot, huh? Pretty fucking whack, if you ask me, homie. I like my vampires free range. Uh, cage cage raised <laughs> vampires don't taste as good. No, no, definitely not. You got to get them free range where they can get all that flavor and spice. <laughs> Um, just out, just outside of the fortress, um, the sun is just starting to rise over the top of the barrier peaks that are to your left. And it brings a, a warm, comforting glow that makes you guys sort of feel better after your rough adventure. Um, but as you begin to walk back towards the town of Ravensmoor, um, a low rumbling sound fills your ears. I would like to investigate that. Find out what it is. It, cool. it feels ominous. You took the hint. Yes. <laughs> I caught you with my bait. Go for it. 16. Oof. Very well done. Thank you. Um, yeah. An investigation check of, of 16. You actually look towards the sky and you can see that there's a giant blimp um, sort of rumbling across and it's being pulled by two enormous golden smoke billowing dragons. Um, Im immediately... Uh, Ashley, you kind of you see Nimbus and the the light in him, which has kind of been just kind of cyclically going through kind of bluey, greeny, purpley colours. Just instantly, it just goes out on the sight of dragons, which is a sign of clouds being arousal. Uh, mm. It turns out Nimbus is just super horny for dragons. Yeah, yeah. Um, underneath the blimp, um, it looks like a, a small bronze hut is hanging down and Nimbus being a man of the a, a cloud of the world you realise that this is the travelling convoy of Anaxi Zephyrs. he's the greatest cartographer hey, that's the travelling convoy of An Anaxi, Anaxi Zephyrs. Je Jeff Alice Jefferson <laughs> Zephyrs. no we're not changing names every time Anaxi Zephyrs. Ashley, that's Alice <laughs> Jefferson. Oh. I'm her biggest fan. No. And I zoom. 
I zoom. <laughs> I am zooming. Okay. <laughs> zooming where? Uh, I'd like it to be known that in character, I look at my hand and there's smudge writing that just says the correct <laughs> pronunciation of the name. Anaxi Zephries. Alice Way! <laughs> it's a sign from God! Anaxi Zephries chases after the cloud. <laughs> okay, so the uh, the blimp is travelling in the direction of Ravensmoor, um, and even though you are really sounding real stupid, uh, Nimbus, you know that he's he's there to enlist support from the locals in uncovering lost secrets and trying to map the world. Well, if anyone's going to know where some fucking keys are, it's this guy for sure, right? He makes the best cloud maps. Maps for clouds. <laughs> Don't suck his dick too hard, you fucking cloud boy. Okay, so what are we doing? What we're doing is we are rushing the carriage. I I need to see Alice Jefferson, famed traveller of the world and by the sounds of things, cartographer. Okay, well, I you know, we've been we've been recording now for for a little while, um, and I feel like we've we've met a nice little bookend to our adventure here, so I'll give you a little bit of flavour, and then we'll hit pause and lovely. The two of you hurry back to Ravensmoor, and uh, a kind travelling dwarf passes by you and offers a lift in his wagon, providing you don't mind sharing the taxi with a chained Deathcrest ape. And that's it for today, boys. That was our session, our dungeon and dragon. I, what was your favourite bit, Ashley? I really liked the dungeon. I, I liked, we saw, we did see a dragon. Wow. See, guys, it's like I planned that. It's like I planned it. Tom, you're the best dungeon master. My only, my only quandary now is, how do you go on from this? You've got it. You've done it all. Yeah, I've, I've beat it. But um, there is, there is more of this story, of course. Uh, I've written much more than just what we've done today. Um, I, I know, audience, I know that this was very different to what you're probably used to. Um, I said that we would post the uh, the map on in our Instagram and also we'll post a picture of what a Deathcrest ape looks like if you're interested. Um, but I mean, we'd love some feedback to know whether this is something that you might like to carry on hearing occasionally or if it's just really... Every 10th episode we do, maybe we do yeah, like yeah, a, yeah. every 10th episode maybe we do like a, a D&D story carry on and then we release it as a playlist, you know. Yeah. That sounds Separate good. Separate thing altogether. Yeah, I, I like that idea. But yeah, it's it's totally up to you guys. You know, uh, I mean, you know, we, we want to put out what you guys want to listen to, but we also do like the main format of our podcast. So if this is something you like, you know, we we all, in, we the three of us enjoy playing it. And if you want to hear more, we'd be happy to do that occasionally. So yeah, um, thanks for thanks for joining us play this dumb, stupid game. And we hope that it was interesting enough to keep you for whatever amount of time this ends up being. So thank you. But just before we do go, uh, I just like to say a huge thank you uh, to Tom and Alex for being just being my friends. Oh, that's very wholesome. Yeah. I'm feeling it. I'm vibing. Thanks, uh, it's, Ash. it's been a, a rough work week and this podcast and, and the listeners and, and you guys you know, helped me through it. So thank oh, you for that. Oh, that's very sweet, Ashley. Well, I'm I'm glad to have been around the, the, the two of you playing this dumb fuck game and doing this dumb fuck podcast. How have you found Dungeon Mastership? Um, it's, do you know what? Um, it's tough. And um, you guys are uh-huh. half wit fuckos, which which is good, or is you know makes it a little bit more difficult. But Tom's put us on hold. Tom's put us on hold. I feel like that speaks more volumes than anything else. Tom's called his secretary and said, "Oh, I don't have time to talk to these people." No, I'm back. No, Tom. No, no. you put us on hold. We were talking to the listeners. I'm and sorry. And you thought you were just too cool. How many FaceTime call ending sound effects do you think I have, Tom? It's not many. Many. I don't have many left. Oh, I th- oh. Tom, we haven't got the budget to add the do 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 do. That's the fucking Windows shut down. Yeah, noise, that's not the right. Well, that's the one I've used now. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Great. Um, could you also do the crazy frog ding ding uh, for me? Well, yeah. I leave. Yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. No okay. worries. That's good. As always, we will see you next week. Bye, listeners. Okay, bye. 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 bye.